Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, today I'm going to take you through my favorite discoveries of 2023. Uh, these videos have been popping up everywhere and I literally have a list of videos that I want to film for you guys that are all prepped and ready to go. Uh, but I wanted to do this one today and this one first because we're getting very close to the end of the year and it's time to talk about this. I have 12 fragrances here one for every month of the year. Not that I bought them that way. Some were purchased, you know, a couple at a time in certain months and then other months I didn't buy anything at all. So this is what we're dealing with. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. I just want to highlight as well that these are not necessarily new releases this year. Some of them are, but for the most part, these are just what I've discovered this year. I am actually pretty slow to jump on trends for the most part. And I do try to contain myself when it comes to new releases and not try to get into the habit of tracking down all the new stuff at any cost because obviously this hobby is quite expensive and it is getting more and more expensive especially this year the prices of everything have just gone through the roof so i am trying to practice discovering things slowly and obviously making sure that i really love something in order to be able to add it into my wardrobe because space is limited and I'm rambling, so I'm just gonna get into the video. <laughs> and also one last thing, before we get into the video, uh, we are coming up to the end of the year and I just want to acknowledge your support throughout the year. I really do appreciate your engagement and the connection that we make in this little community, both in the comments and when people contact me privately as well through Instagram, etc. So thank you, thank you so much for being here, for commenting on the videos, for liking the videos, and and um, just engaging in the conversation. I get a lot of inspiration and recommendations from you guys in the comments and that's what this is all about. It's about building community and having a place to talk about this stuff because for most of us, the people in our lives on a daily basis think that we're pretty nuts. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to get that out of the way because often by the time I get to the end of a video, I am tired and I forget to say the things that I wanna say. Okay, let's get into the video. So first up in the list, I'm just gonna get it out of the way and talk about the cliche because at this point, I think it is a little bit of a cliche. It's been talked about so, so much. It's not a 2023 release. I believe it was a 2022 release. I remember when it got released, I got a sample of it and I didn't love it. And then I, I don't know why I persisted, but I did. I think I just wanted to use up the sample. And uh, by the time I got to the end of the sample, uh, I had absolutely fallen in love with it. <laughs> And it is, a, it is a very polarizing one, but this is Guidance by Amouage. If you search the internet on this one, you will find a raft of descriptions. I think everyone gets something a little bit different from this. There is a lot going on in this fragrance. I think the common thread from what people get from this fragrance is um, that pear in the opening and that hazelnut, that creamy hazelnut note. And it's interesting because the first few times I smelled this, I didn't really know what I was smelling and the more and more that I smelled it the more the frankincense really jumped out at me um, yes you have these fruits and florals in there as well and this sort of gourmand element running through it particularly in the opening but to me the note that really stands out to me and I can't unsmell it now that I've noticed it is the frankincense this is pretty much more of a frankincense fragrance to me than anything else, but it's definitely not a typical churchy style fragrance. It's also not a um, smoky frankincense. It's, it is a resinous frankincense, but because you've got these other elements in there, it comes off quite different and it, it is a gourmand leaning frankincense to me. It's a very weird fragrance. It's very polarizing. Some people can't stand it. And I understand that too, because sometimes even now, when I first spray this on, on some days I still do get like a moment of feeling a little bit nauseous and wondering whether this is not going to go well for me, but it does eventually settle for me and it, it actually settles pretty quickly, I would say within the first couple of minutes. That is Guidance by Amouage. Sticking with the theme of pink bottles, this is another 2022 release, but it is one that I discovered this year because I, I don't think it hit Australia until this year. I could be wrong about that. This is Sakura by Ormond Jane. So this is a cherry blossom 
fragrance but it's actually quite an interesting cherry blossom um, it's not I don't think it's as mass appealing as a cherry blossom as a lot of other cherry blossom fragrances I mean cherry blossom is typically a pretty easy to like note but this one has a resinous element to it maybe it's a little bit balsamic this one has a lot of woody elements to it it's a little bit there's a little bit of musk in there as well um, but there's other florals in here in addition to that cherry blossom and I think the notes of osmanthus and um, lily are kind of jumping out at me in, alongside that cherry blossom I don't think this is your typical mass appealing easy to like cherry blossom fragrance that said I think it's absolutely stunning and I really really love it it does have an element of that Ormond Jane DNA if you're familiar with Ormond Jane fragrances um, they do use a lot of spice and and, um, resins and wood. I don't think there's a lot of resinous notes in here necessarily but the amber accord in the base combined with some of the spices like coriander in the top really do give a sensation of a little bit of a resinous aspect to it but for the most part I would say this is a woody spicy cherry blossom fragrance it has a really earthy feel to it it's not as bright and sparkly as a lot of other cherry blossom fragrances so proceed with caution obviously sample first but I really love this one and partly that's probably because I love their DNA I love the spices that they blend in and I just feel like all of their fragrances are just super super classy and after many many years of going on and on and on about them <laughs> I have recently become an affiliate of Ormond Jane so uh, if you are interested in trying any of their range you can get a 10% discount using a link that I'll put in the description box below um, no obligation to purchase anything obviously and please obviously look after yourselves but that said Sakura by Ormond Jane has definitely made my list of favorite discoveries for 2023 okay one that was released this year which I really really love is this one this is Fuel by or Fuel by Miskeo Parfums now I know that Pep from the Sentinel has an affiliation with this brand and I am very good friends with Pep and of course I'm always going to support things that he does because frankly I think he has excellent taste and of course so does Marie who is the founder of this brand I sampled the entire range and I thought all of them were lovely but this is the one which when a sample hit my mailbox I smelled it and I went that is the one that is the Miskeo perfume for me I really really love this this to me smells like the change of seasons from summer to autumn and it smells like a mixture of um, dried grass dried vegetation dying off blended with some new stuff that's still coming through because there's still some warmth of the summer remaining in the air but it's also mingled with a little bit of shadow a little bit of cold a little bit of dampness so you've got this this you know dewy dampness in the mornings where the mornings are getting a little bit colder it's a bit darker the sun's taking a little bit longer to come up and you have this sort of damp earth uh, and dewiness dewy dampness mixed in with this vegetation that's you know been dried out by the summer sun but you also maybe have a little bit of new growth coming through that to me is this fragrance it just smells so captivating so natural smelling I feel like this is what I want to wear every time I take the dog for a walk or something like that uh, it definitely has a grassiness to it but a golden hued grassiness I just yeah I just love it this is a whole vibe anyway it's just it's just a mood and I absolutely love it so that is Fuel by Miskeo Parfums next up we have Belle Arme by Les Abstrais this is this is also a 2022 release and oh gosh it is so <laughs> it's so good it's so good now I did I technically I guess you could say I did discover this in 2022 but let's just call it 2023 because this is the year where I I really I guess learned more about this fragrance and obviously I bought the bottle so this is a gorgeous gourmand iris fragrance it's perfect for the winter but so for those of you who are in winter right now uh, I cannot think 
of a cozier fragrance than this one. It does have a cacao note in it and I definitely pick up a, a bit of a chocolatey vibe from it but it's not um, it's not an overpowering chocolate element which is good because I if it was too much chocolate I probably wouldn't like to wear it. It, it leans gourmand but it's not um, full-blown gourmand it doesn't smell like food necessarily it is quite sweet it's musky there's tonka as well uh, and then just this beautiful smooth base uh, which i think is primarily sandalwood but it doesn't come off as too woody i think blended in with that musk and the orris and the cacao and i think there's also ginger in here although to be fair, I'm not sure I necessarily pick ginger in here. I don't pick out a ginger note. That's the thing with this fragrance. There's not much that I can really detect as isolated notes. I think the orris and the cacao um, are kind of the most obvious ones, but they just blend in so well with everything else in the, in the profile that you don't really get anything specific. You just get this beautiful, sweet, fluffy, musky, intoxicating forest based fragrance and it's just gorgeous so that is Belle Arme by Les Abstray. The next one is actually a 2020 release but I only discovered it this year because these are not easily accessible for me to sample they are sold in Australia but it's kind of hard to get samples of them this is Unu or Unue or Unui, I don't know how to say it. I probably should have researched that first by Jeroboam. And this is an extrait de parfum, so it's quite strong. This is a really lovely tropical leaning um, ylang ylang fragrance, but when I say tropical leaning, there are there's a tropical element to it, and you definitely get that sensation of being at the beach, but it also has a lot of sandalwood and musk in it. So it just creates this really gorgeous, um, creamy, smooth, enveloping scent bubble. It's not overly sweet, even though it does have notes like pineapple in it. And I wouldn't even say it's overly fruity, even though it has this tropical fruity element. It's a very elegant and sophisticated floral with a musky sandalwood base. And the fruits just help to provide a little bit of a twist. But again, it's not a fruity fragrance by any means. I just absolutely adore this. And in fact, I was wearing this outfit yesterday and I wore this yesterday. And this morning when I was putting this shirt on, I was thinking, oh yeah, I can smell. <laughs> I can still smell this really, really clearly. I will say that I don't feel like it has a huge projection at all, even though it's a, an extra. But I think the thing with extras is that they do tend to sit closer to the skin, but they last really, really well. And that's definitely the case here. Um, it also gives me a little bit of a really expensive skin lotion sort of vibe as well. Yeah, it's very easy to like, I think, this one. And it has been compared to Samsara. And I agree that I feel like there's some similarities in the scent profile. But Samsara is also a very polarizing type of fragrance. I think some people either really love it or they really hate it. And if you are on the side of not being a fan of Samsara, I don't think that necessarily means that you won't like this one because I feel like this one is a lot softer, it's a lot more elegant, um, it's not as punchy. The fruits in this one are not as punchy as I used to get from the Samsara EDP and um, it's more musky as well. And I feel like the other florals that are in here help to um, just give it a bit more of a sophisticated edge. So I highly, highly recommend checking this one out because I just think it's an absolute stunner. It's very elegant, but it can be worn in a lot of scenarios. And I even think this would be a great one to wear to work because again, it doesn't project a whole heap. People will no might notice it on you when they get close to you, but they'll just think that you smell really, really good. Um, it's not offensive in any way, shape or form, but it's also, I think, quite unique and very elevated. So that is Unui by Jeroboam. Next up, we have one that I discovered earlier this year, but uh, I was waiting to go to Europe to purchase it because I wanted the smaller bottle size format. The, the local perfumery that stocks this brand here uh, only has the 100 ml bottles, but I didn't realize that this, this house also has a, an online Australian store that you can get pretty much the full range from. But this is Liri by Santa Maria Novella. This is a really gorgeous iris fragrance, obviously. Uh, it's very airy, 
maybe a hint soapy and um, it, there is galbanum in it, it and I think uh, Claire from Smurfy Girly has said this is quite green to her. I don't necessarily pick it up as being green, but the, I think the galbanum for me adds, lends a really nice fresh element to the opening. But when I compare this to other fragrances that to me are definitely green, this doesn't really feel that green to me, but it, it, there, is, there is a hint of greenness here, but it doesn't jump out at me necessarily as being a green fragrance. And if you aren't a fan of green fragrances, then like you may still enjoy this because I feel like th this is more of a, a floral, sort of earthy orris fragrance that's very airy and it's not too sweet either. So that is Liri by Santa Maria Novella. Okay, so the next one is one that I have been talking a bit about lately too. This is Le Jardin de Montsoli by Hermes. I only have the little bottle because I was trying to be good. This is a really great hot weather fragrance. Uh, it, it has a very watery feel to it. It's also quite citrusy, but the citruses feel really well-rounded and sort of juicy. There's no sharp edges or pithiness to it. This one I do find to be a little green leaning. It's a little bit aromatic as well. And after filming the last video where I was trying to remember what the fruit that was in here, it's got a kumquat note in it but to me it sort of comes off uh, quite melony. It's a very watery melony type of fruit note. It just has a very refreshing aspect to it. And again, just a slight, slight hint of soapiness, which I think comes from the jasmine note, which is not indolic at all. It's very light and translucent and, and fresh smelling. And this is just so good. And for the type of fragrance that it is, it has excellent longevity. So perfect for the summer but having said that i also wore this a lot in the winter um, i just found it to be really uplifting and a really great one to wear on those days where i just felt like i needed a breath of fresh air this gave me that next up is one that <laughs> i again i think this was a 2022 release but i didn't sample it until i think april this year and at first i was thinking no i don't need it i don't need it and then during the, the frantic period of me trying to find a wedding fragrance this kind of popped into the periphery because every time i wore this sample matt commented on it and matt doesn't necessarily comment on how I smell. I mean, a lot of the times he'll just smell it, say, oh, you smell good, but he'll never, it's very rare that he'll go, wow, that fragrance is amazing. Or what is it that you're wearing? Usually he'll just say, oh, you smell nice, but it won't be enough to pique his interest to say, what is, what is the perfume? I want to know what the perfume is. I thought, hmm, maybe this could be a wedding fragrance contender. <laughs> This is Lady Whitesnake by Stefan Umberluca. I did really like this when I sampled it. I sampled this and God of Fire at the same time. And I distinctly remember I enjoyed this one more. I did try and convince myself that I didn't need it, but this really is quite different to anything else that's in my fragrance wardrobe. It, it's a sweet white floral fragrance with a suede undertone and that suede undertone does feel white. I guess partly that might be the white florals that's helping to do that. This is a really interesting fragrance because even though it has this white leather feel to it or white suede feel to it, there's also a darker element running through it as well, like the dark woods. And so I get that contrast between you know, these beautiful sweet white florals, uh, this sort of leather note that's quite light in color, in tone in when I smell it, but then there's this darkness that underpins it, which makes this a really, really great one for evening. I actually struggle to wear this necessarily during the day because even though it's a white floral, I just find that it's too dark. Uh, there's, there's definitely a very formal evening element to this fragrance. Um, so this is probably one of my more black tie type perfumes. That said, sometimes in winter, I did just spritz it on during the day and it was fine. But in my mind, this is just such an elegant, formal smelling fragrance that um, I'm more likely to reach for it when I'm going out in the evening or doing something a bit special. So that is Lady Whitesnake. The next one is one that really shocked me. I have 
in the past kind of struggled with Zerzhov fragrances and I think partly my struggle was because I was sampling all of the fragrances that all of the people who like to wear really big loud fragrances were talking about and I didn't really dive into the brand to explore things for myself and then this year I have been doing that I've been really sampling things from I've actually been sampling quite a lot of Zerzhov fragrances and what I'm discovering is that there are lots of Zerzhov fragrances that I actually do really enjoy but I guess my tastes in what I like from the Zerzhov line are quite different to all of the ones that you hear about being talked about on a regular basis so um, I probably will do another video where I talk about my favorite Zerzhov fragrances I know it's a very highly talked about brand and I think it would just be interesting to to put out a video where I'm talking about maybe some of the fragrances from the line that aren't necessarily talked about that much anyway I digress the one that really caught my attention and really started to get me thinking about Zerzhov and sampling Zerzhov was Opera I was going to say Opera by Zerzhov but it's pretty clear that <laughs> I'm talking about Zerzhov. It's so interesting again this is another fragrance where the descriptions that other people have of this kind of don't match up with maybe my experience of this fragrance. To me this is very woody and very floral. There are fruits in here and everyone talks about the fruits and all the fruity opening on this. To me this doesn't feel that fruity in the opening. There are fruits present but I get so much woods in the in the opening and to me woody element in here particularly in the opening smells a bit like um, a, ca a cashmere wood or a cashmere maybe I don't know if that's what's in here but that's the aesthetic that it creates for me I think of cashmere when I smell this as I said there, there are fruits in here I find the fruits to be blended in with these other elements of woody notes and florals yeah it's just it's just interesting to to hear you know these other descriptions but because they don't release maybe the notes people are forced to really think about what they're getting rather than relying on a, on a scent profile and I think that's what I find interesting about when I hear descriptions of Zerzhov fragrances particularly the ones where the the notes aren't released or maybe they're not that easy to find the descriptions can vary quite widely and I'm, and I'm definitely not saying that anyone's wrong because that is like that is the crux of why this hobby is so interesting because we all perceive things differently depending on our experiences what we've been exposed to throughout our lives and things that we recognize my theory is that I tend to pick up on things that I recognize in fragrances because I recognize them not necessarily because they're the most dominant notes in a scent profile and I just think it's really interesting when people are sort of forced to blind test things and and kind of piece together the, the perfume profile for themselves anyway um, so to, to me this is quite a woody fragrance but there's lots of florals in here and it is supported by fruity notes I think the fruity notes that I do get feel like a bit of a a fleshy orangey not orange but like um, a fleshy type of fruit a stone fruit or something like that the florals in here again I feel like I'm getting sort of fleshy floral note I don't think there's rose in here I don't necessarily detect rose I think it's more sort of white and yellow florals once again it's quite musky uh, I think it has a bit of a leathery vibe to me as well again it feels very elevated very formal and to me this feels very formal very black tie which I think matches the aesthetic of the bottle perfectly so that is Opera by Zerzhov okay next up I have this little sample of Rosendo Matteo number no. six I just talked about this in a previous video so I'll, pro I'll try to keep this brief basically this feels very similar to me to Rosendo Matteo number no. five but without that really challenging rubbery plasticky element to it and it also has a very tropical opening uh, with a lot of jasmine in it as well so the jasmine is present throughout the entire wear so what this does is give this fragrance a very tropical island beachy aspect to it but 
It's also that beautiful musky sandalwood base, which is quite spicy as well, and maybe a little bit leathery. And so it's very, very good for the evening. I think it's very sensual. I think it's very seductive and intoxicating. And I am absolutely loving this sample. That is Rosendo Mateo number six. Next up, we have another perfume that I bought on our holiday. This is Un Matin de Rage. I, I think previously I said Un Matin de Rage and I was told off. <laughs> Not by you guys, but by Matt. <laughs> this is a white floral fragrance, which when I first tried it, I thought it had orange blossom in it. But I've since learned that actually it's more gardenia and jasmine. But there is a vanilla note in here that's, that sweetens it and makes it very fluffy. And it really reminds me of a fluffy orange blossom. This is absolutely delightful. I find this to be very airy and, as I said, fluffy. It's very uh, uplifting. It's quite youthful, really. It's a little bit green, a little bit aromatic. I think there's a ginger note in here and the ginger note doesn't impart any heat or anything, but you get, it's almost like a candied ginger. This was a, this was definitely a love at first sniff. I really, really enjoyed this and it wears beautifully as well. So when I wear this, I feel like I can smell it all day long. Uh, I feel like I've got this beautiful scent bubble around me. I feel like other people can smell me, but it's not in any way offensive. Uh, it's just, it's a very easy fragrance to like if you like floral fragrances. There's lots of florals in here. So yeah, that is one of my favorite pickups for the year. All right, my battery is about to die. <laughs> so uh, last fragrance in this list, I do have an honorable mention after this, but, but the last one I want to talk about is Fleur de Rain by Maison Godet Parfums. This is a little perfume brand that's located in St. Paul de Vence in France and I stumbled across their perfumery and uh, I just fell in love with their perfumes and the perfumery too. It's just the most beautiful little sanctuary I've ever stumbled into. So this one is primarily a tuberose fragrance. There, are, there is some other florals in here. I think there's mimosa as well. It's quite sweet. It's also a hint green or maybe a hint aromatic. And then there's a woody base as well. And it took me a while to actually pick this up, which I thought was really interesting because I am a huge Oris fan, but there is an iris note in here. But when I first smelled this, I was thinking it was sort of musky because it has that sort of almost fluffy element to it, kind of just a hint powdery, but not too much. It is an iris note. And now that I've worn it quite a bit, it does have a really beautiful, smooth, buttery, just slightly powdery iris note as well, which just underpins those florals so so beautifully uh, it is a sweet one i think i mentioned that so it's not overpoweringly sweet but it's probably sweeter than the type of fragrance i would typically go for but it's a popular one for a reason i mean popular in the context of the maison godet line i think this is one of their best sellers having said that i've I don't know if I've ever heard anyone talk about them. It's a beautiful, beautiful line. If you ever get the chance to try them, I highly recommend. Unfortunately, I don't think that they do sample sets or discovery sets. So it is tricky to get your nose on them and they are not inexpensive perfumes. So if that is the one thing I could say to Maison Godet is please, please do a discovery set so that we can all um, discover more of the line because the shipping can be quite pricey, sadly. All right, so that is the last one in the actual list. Just very quickly, an honorable mention because I just have to. Serena Intensivo by Ormon Jane. I have to mention it because this is the perfume that I wore to get married in at my uh, civil service. It's a spicy, leathery floral fragrance. The leather is, I guess, more suede-like to me. I've talked about it in my wedding fragrances video, so maybe I'll just, I'll stop chewing your ear off because this video is getting quite long now. Um, but I just, I had to mention it because this was technically a 20 23 discovery for me. Um, a friend of mine was selling this bottle and she convinced me to buy it. She said, I really think you will like this one. And I did already own a travel size of Sarina, the original Sarina EDP. She knows my tastes and she said, I think you'll really like this one. So I'm glad that I got it because I 
don't know if it's been discontinued, but it, it appears that it's not readily available on the All One Jane website anymore. Um, so I'm really glad that I picked it up. And as I said, I wore it for my civil service. So I kind of I kind of had to mention it. But because I already had Sakura in the list, uh, I, I decided to not include this. I mean, you all know that I obviously love it because I wore it for a very special occasion. But uh, that is Sarina Intensivo. Right, okay, so I did promise you that I was going to pick a favorite from the list. Ah, it's so hard. I just, I love all of them, obviously, for differing reasons. It's hard to pick favorites, okay? But if I did have to pick a favorite, um, I, I, I definitely think it has to be Fleur de Rain by Maison Godet. This one is just, so right up my alley of the type of perfumery that I'm really into right now. Um, these beautiful delicate florals, a bit of sweetness as well with a nice sort of translucent uh, delicate woody base. Oh, it's just it's just so pretty. I feel so feminine and womanly when I wear this and approachable. I've seen a couple of videos recently on in the beauty and fashion space uh, where they're talking about yeah, unapproachable looks and stuff. Um, I think I might do a video on unapproachable fragrances <laughs> or fragrances that make me unapproachable. Yeah, I think I think I can do that. My top favorite for the year is definitely Fleur de Rain by Maison Godet. But again, as I said, it was hard to pick a favorite because they are all, all of the ones that I've talked about today are just so beautiful and uh, I love them all pretty much equally. Really, it's just about what mood I'm in as to what I choose to wear. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, please do give this a like um, if you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to see you join the conversation on a regular basis. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I just, I, I love the interaction that we have in the comments down here. So it's always very positive, very supportive of each other. And um, I, again, I get lots of recommendations from the comments section of these videos. So uh, if you are looking for good recommendations, then the people who are usually in the comments below um, have extremely good taste. All right, so they were my top discoveries of 2023. Please do share below what you discovered in 2023. And particularly if you discovered any new releases that you thought were worthy of trying, as I mentioned, I'm not very good at uh, jumping on all of the new stuff, partly because it usually takes a while for things to hit the Australian market anyway. But I, I do very much appreciate any recommendations from you guys, because if you're watching, then you're typically watching because we have similar tastes or that you, you resonate with the ones that I enjoy. And therefore I will prioritize the ones that you recommend over over just things that I see on Instagram. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, don't forget to give this a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, I'm all for Christmas, all the happy smiles and the wishes. And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe.